Hey everyone, it's Maggie Butt with Vlogist Day 15. And yes, this is going to be a two, uh, it's going to be a longer one because I missed yesterday, but I did do a two day kind of game session thing. Uh, so a uh, wonderful woman up here in Seattle does a kind of game day thing after Gen Con, one after Essen, and she gets all of the cool games and she brings them out and you get to play a bunch of stuff. So I got to spend many, many hours in the last couple of days playing a lot of games, which is fun. And because of the wonderful people I know, I also got my copy of Code Names, and you can see it got a little beat up in the shipping, but that's okay. Um, Code Names was um, kind of one of the bigger hits of the con, and it's on the light end. It's a uh, Vlada Shavadal does a party game, um, so I didn't do Pictomania because it's just not my. I don't like drawing that much, but uh, Code Names I was really excited by. I used to love love password so this is kind of inspired by password I'm also um, I've lost and won an equal amount of games of it so far so that's a good thing uh, a player um, one player stands back and gives clues and their team gets to guess which words out on the board they're trying to clue with that one one thing and the other team also has words out on the board and there's a big bomb in the middle of the board so uh, <laughs> it's a lot of good fun. So we played quite a number of games of that this week. Um, after that, last night we played uh, Tides of Time, which is the two-player drafting game from Portal Games. Uh, it is two-player only. It's these big, beautiful cards, and um, what you're doing is you're looking at five of them. You choose one, you pass the other four, and you both flip up your, your choice. And each of them is a different suit, so there's five different suits, and most of them give you points for having the most of a given suit, and uh, three points per time you get a specific suit, and then there are some wackadoodle ones, like double the score of your best one, or whatever it is. Um, so those are really fun. The game is light and sweet. I, in my personal life, don't really have room for it. Uh, I just... I don't play that many two players anyway, and so if I'm going to play two players, it's generally a little on the longer, heavier side. Um, but it is a lot of fun. It's very well done um, and just absolutely gorgeous. So it will it will do very very well once it comes out. Uh, after that, we played Discoveries. So that is the Lewis and Clark kind of dice game. <laughs> uh, so uh, everybody has like a color of dice, and you roll them. And there's four different faces plus uh, journals, and on a turn, you may either um, grab some dice either off the board or just grab all your own dice back. If you grab the board, you might get like a mixture of different uh, players' pieces. Or you can set out one type of your dice, so all your horseshoes can go out to the horseshoe spaces you have. And once a space fills up, it activates the action. Um, you can buy tech. And you can go on these like discoveries, and the discoveries are victory points, and how you do your set collection for the most part. Um, that was okay. It's very pretty. Uh, the dice rolling and the kind of interaction is very fun. Uh, it's very hard to see how well people are doing while you're playing, which I'm sure would get easier once you played it a few times. Um, I wasn't a huge Lewis and Clark fan in the first place, so the fact that this is kind of similar to that. Didn't help or hurt it, but uh, it was a, a lot of randomness for me, and the player powers that you get, the tech that you buy, it just varies so much that I, I don't... I would play it again, certainly. If it was in, in front of me on a table or someone wanted to learn it and they wanted me to teach it, I'd be happy to teach it, but I don't know that I would seek it out again. <laughs> Alright, so that was the, the first evening's worth of games. Uh, so I did have two days of this, so you get to listen to more. Um, I started out with some more code names this morning. <laughs> did very well today. We had kind of our blue-haired team back on track. Um, then we wanted something light and sweet while uh, Brian was finishing up a game of room service, so we played Letter Tycoon. Uh, Letter Tycoon is a, I think it's two to five players or some weird player count. Um, you have letters of the alphabet on a card. And so you have a handful of these cards, and then each letter of the alphabet has one patent. And the patent price varies on how common the letter is in the deck and also how common the letter is in words. And so on a turn, you may either, and you're not going to do this, discard cards and redraw, 
or you can make a word of at least three letters, no proper nouns, no hyphens, no nothing, and score it. So uh, like a three-letter word is worth a buck, but like a six-letter word is worth five bucks in a stock. And after that, you can buy a patent of any letter that you used in your word. So if I used the R and I had the six to seven bucks that it cost me, I could pay that. And now any other time a player uses R that is not me, the bank pays me a buck per R, which is lovely. And so the patent prices, the money, and the stocks all add up to be your victory points at the end of the game. The game is only triggered when someone has passed a threshold of patents. So our threshold in a five-player game was 21. Uh, it varies depending on the number of players. Um, so um, in Letter Tycoon, I... I went after the goofball letters, like it was B, V, and X for me, because each of the goofball letters, no one's going to really pay you out for them, but they all give you special abilities. So one of my special abilities, I can make two words instead of one, so I got to use more cards. And that was just, I was having a lot of fun playing the game. I did not win the game, but I had a heck of a lot of fun. Um, this is the type of game I would send Someone in my life who knew I played board games but didn't know what they were about, that wanted to see a new one, um, someone, like, I, I would want to show that off as a part of the hobby. That's a good, like, intro game, not gateway game necessarily. It's not a Euro or anything that kind of shows you that new era of games, but it's a clever word game with a weird twist to it. And it's, it's weird enough where it's going to get people thinking about how, how much different that is from a Scrabble or a... Monopoly or whatever they're used to. Um, the the winning strategy is probably not gaining all the player powers. The winning strategy is probably getting one player power early and then playing large words. Doing well in the game is apparently how you win. Um, I did not do large words. I got to play two words a, a turn and so I played two words a turn kind of consistently and that's not the way. It's not. Um, after Letter Tycoon, we went to lunch, and I will see if I can find my next game. I took pictures so I wouldn't forget anything. Oh, oh, this is the big one. Okay, so we played Steamworks. Steamworks from Tasty Menstrual Games. I think it was Mark Churchill. I gotta look this up again. Um, but Steamworks is, uh, it says two to five players. Again, all games say two to five players. They're all liars. Uh, we played a five-player game of Steamworks. It is a table hog, because this is the game where you buy components and sources, and then you put together spots, and they turn into what the workers go to. So you're building the worker placement spaces. Um, Alex Churchill, pardon me. Alex Churchill um, is also responsible for just Space Dog's Body, which I don't know anything about. It doesn't have any ratings. I don't think it exists yet. Nope, it doesn't. So, uh, Alex Churchill is apparently new to published gaming world. I'm sure he's been doing this for some time. I should probably look him up and see if I can find out more about him later. But, um, the game is very neat. It does have the steampunk aesthetic. Uh, so there is a Zeppelin as your first player token, and everything is about electricity and steam and stuff like that. But, um, this reminded me a lot of playing um, The Kings of Aaron Steam. Both in that it was the steampunk aesthetic on top of a very solid game, and that it had asymmetrical player powers as well as non-asymmetrical ones. It was a large, over-the-top, lots of mechanics type game. Um, Kings of Iron Steam was a pick-up and deliver with a twist. It was very fun. I would recommend it to most people. Um, it never made it into my collection, but it was a very good, good game. Um, this is another one where if I played it three players, I think I'll like it more. There's a lot of moments in the game where you need to be able to see what else is out on the tableau because when you place a worker, you can place it on your own or you can place it on somebody else's worker placement spots and give them victory points. And so by the end of the game, with five players, there were so many machines out on the board that I was just like, does anyone have another thing where I could build, build a three size? Any other benefits to it? Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, like, just calling it out and seeing if other people had what I needed. Um, it, it was really neat. Uh, two players got kind of ahead of it at the beginning, but we were all kind of figuring it out and catching up. We called it at um, the 
almost to the end of the game, just because it was a learning game. It wasn't really worth finishing. And once it comes out, I will probably pick up a copy and play a lot more. Um, I'm thinking three players is where we want to be. Maybe the two player. We'll see. That might be worth testing. But uh, five players was too crazy. Too many machines. Too much stuff. Um, I'm sure they're going to tell me that that gets a lot better once you know the game. I am sure that I don't want to watch a tableau that large all the time to see what my best move is because it is very much about identifying a best move. It is about figuring out what is the best move on the board that's going to block the most people and not give out too many victory points. And in three players, I'm much more comfortable making that determination than in five. Uh, so, <laughs> no, long-winded explanation of Steamworks, but I do like it. I like the thought of building my own worker placement spots. I like almost everything about the game. I love the asymmetrical nature of it. It's super funky. I happen to pick, um, we played the B-sides because that's just our way. Um, so when you use a meeple, you can either pass with that, that meeple in particular and take some income, or you can use the meeple and have to pay whatever that income was. And I got the one woman in the whole game where instead of paying money to those workers, you pay these source tiles. So you have to build kind of a component engine to give you stuff to be able to use your workers. And that was a really cool, interesting power. Um, Brian had one where normally you can only build so much onto machines. He had one where you could just keep building onto your machines and make one big blob machine, which is cool. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I can't wait to play it again. I During the game, we cut it off short, which is not a good sign. But it's a sign that we didn't want to ruin the experience for ourselves by making this five-player game keep going. We just cut it off there and said, when this comes out, we'll play it more. Um, and, oh, to last the night. All right. I don't know about this one. We played Tesla versus Edison. We played a five-player game of Tesla versus Edison, and I won this game. I just don't know if it's any fun. Um, it is interesting. It's well crafted in some ways. So Tesla versus Edison has everyone playing a, a figure in, in the in the time period in the like what twenties, eighteen twenties. Where are we? I wish I knew that, um, but I don't. Uh, so you're playing, trying to race, I guess that would be the 1920s, but um, you are racing to try and get AC or DC to become the kind of power sourcing magnate, you know, um, trying to win that race. And so at the top, there is a map that is very similar to building in power grids. So you have different cities and you can build from here to there through two other cities but you have to pay to get through the other cities and um, each time you do that you get your stock kind of raised up so taking over spaces is worth good stock money. Um, you get four of your own stock at the very beginning of the game and then later you can buy and sell stocks but you can never lose those four inherent stocks of your own um, then you're going to kind of bet on a pony of either AC or DC, and you can level up and buy patents. So anytime someone builds in a city and you own the patent to that type of building, you get paid out. Um, and then, and then, then there is the actual stock trading part of it. So in a stock trading part of it, I can buy anybody's stock that I want, and their stock raises up a, a certain amount. I can sell anyone's stock that I already own, and it it trickles down quite a bit. So as the game goes on, the, the board with the stocks goes like this. So their stock falls one, one column over. So at the beginning, it's only three, and then it's four, and then all the way up to six. So by the end of the game, me selling a stock of your stuff is going to affect it by six. So if I sell three of your stocks, it's going to affect it by about about 17. Um, very important stock market. Um, at the end of the game, stocks are everything. So your value of all the stocks you control, all your portfolio, that is your victory points. None of the money you have, none of the positions you got, it's only the stocks that you earned. Um, it's got a bidding round, it's just, it's got a lot of stuff and the game does work for what it does. In a five player game, every piece of it got used. Um, one of our players had played it earlier that day and said that at the three-player game, there was an element of the board. So they, they played on the power grid part, they played in the stock market part, but the ACDC fighting over part, no one really 
played around with that as three players. And at five players, my original intention, I picked Thomas Edison, who had a good building power, so I was going to go up and build as much as I could. But three other people started building pretty heavily, so I just didn't. In a five-player game, if you want to elbow fight with three other players, the, the fifth one's just going to run away with the game. So I let the three have it, and I ran down, and I just played stocks. I bought and sold, bought and sold, bought and sold, tried to keep the leaders down, tried to keep the leaders down by buying stocks and then selling them short, buying stocks and selling them short, and just keeping that momentum going and buying plenty of my own, hoping that no one could tank it. The only problem, I let one too many of my own stocks slip into other people's hands, so uh, I, I didn't get to just completely control it because the stocks are limited, but I did do very, very well. Um, I think when the game comes out, it will sell to a few people who saw the Kickstarter and didn't back it. I think it's going to have some trouble finding an audience because it's just so much game. I don't know who to recommend that for because it's on the longer side, too. Um, it was Our learning game was significantly long. And for people who don't usually take that long on turns, it was, it was yeah, it was significant. So um, for only having a couple actions per person per round, um, I would play it again, again, I would, I would play it again. But um, certainly the, the game that I had the most fun playing during my two days at Sasquatch was probably Codenames followed by Steamworks. And Steamworks, I would imagine, will be my favorite thing I've played three months from now from this day. Because um, in three months I'll have enough knowledge of what's going on and what I should expect and how to build, and how to get an engine going, and then how to best not give too many victory points out, but to still keep the game from um, stagnating. Because uh, what happens is you, there's only so many victory points per round, so if I use other people's worker placement spots, this is Steamworks again, if I use their worker placement spots, I give them a victory point from that pool, and as that pool empties, we go to the next era, and there are three eras. Um, we only played through the first two this evening, and... and decided to call it, but I, I'm, I'm very excited to try that one again. Um, it was just a heck of a lot of fun. Whew. All right, that was a lot of talking. I apologize. This is as rambly as it gets. Um, I am hoping that in the next seven days I have a little more time to do cohesive vlogs and things, but um, it was nice to just chat at you for almost 20 minutes. This might have been two parts, and I probably would have been better for doing that, but uh, that's what I did. How are you all doing? What did you play this weekend? What are you playing later? Um, I don't have any plans yet, but I think my next game night is Monday, so we will see what's going on for that. Um, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.